Probably not all of it, but if you knew Joe, you know that's how it would be. Joe would have been the one showing up today with the perfect words to say someone he cared about, mourning the loss of their loved one. Joe left behind a lifetime of memories that we can all celebrate, not just his family, but his friends as well. Joe was always ready for fun, day on the track, in the sand or in the hills, sitting around shooting the breeze. Just good times, any chance that he got to be with his family and friends. There's so much that you can say about Joe. Joe was honorable. He was kind. He was sweet, loving and giving. He cared with a passion about anyone whose life he touched, from family to friend. Joe, very simply put, was an incredible man. Our mom had said that a more beautiful baby she had never seen. Those laughing blue eyes could capture your heart. He was a special blessing, a loving son, and our dad, Ken, absolutely agreed with that truth. Joe is a blessing and a loving son. Even more than that, Joe is an amazing husband, a great brother, a special uncle, and a cousin. Joe also was an avid teacher to many, and you all know what we mean. Those cars, toys, trailers didn't put themselves together. Joe was so much more than we can ever say here today, a completely loved, special part of our family and a genuine friend to all that knew him. Joe was also a blessed and lucky man. He was able to marry the love of his life, his face and wife, Jeff. And then amazingly, he got even luckier. His children entered his life. I don't think there was ever a prouder father. Finally, Joe had his own kids to love torment, teach, and to grow in life with. Joe was the father who taught his son Logan to know his way around the engine, how to ride four-wheelers and dirt bikes, and the father who taught his daughter Brittany those exact same skills. Joe's sister Tammy and Ron Morello, her husband, and Joe's accomplicing crazy schemes wanted to share these memories today. At some point, Joe wanted to try something new, so he headed to the big city and moved in with Ron and Tammy. 
As we all know, Joe really wasn't that big city kind of guy. Though he loved to race cars, he hated the traffic and the people there. So about six months later, he had found his way back home to Pendleton. Tammy and Ron said that when their daughter Tony was about three, she nicknamed her uncle, Uncle Butthead. <laughs> Instead of breaking her heart and saying no, Joe wore the name like a badge of honor, never forgot Big Brother. You are deeply loved, dearly missed, and will never be forgotten. Her sister Teresa used to say this, I'm a lover of, of kids and canines, Joe was too. Children and dogs absolutely love Joe. I think that's one of the greatest things that one can be said about anyone, because dogs know things. They have a sense about who can be trusted. And children feel in a special way. They feel in their heart who truly loves them, and they recognize kindred spirit. Joe is that kindred spirit. If we needed advice as siblings, or as in-laws, as nieces or nephews, if we just needed someone to listen to, Joe was there. Was the advice always good? We will never tell because our parents are here. <laughs> yes, we all bicker. Growing up, but what siblings or close family members don't. No one protected us better, and no one had our backs like Joe. Joe is truly amazing, and we still haven't been able to think about what life will be like without him. Joe's brother John wanted to share a special and crazy memory. I think one of my most memorable and crazy times was when Joe, Jackie, Logan, and my family all went to the Hebner OHB park. While Joe could build a car, but his sense of direction and map reading skills needed work. Joe and Jackie had told me to marry Jonathan and Logan to go up around the turn and up the hill. Then to wait halfway up the hill for them. I had Jonathan on the back of my vehicle and I realized we were on the worst black diamond in the park, literally straight up. Joe had given us bad directions. It wasn't the intermediate hill. When we finally made it to the top, I had to then go back down to the hill to, and rescue Logan, who was halfway up the hill, high centered on a boulder. When we finally made it back to camp, we found out that Joe and Jackie had had to turn around in the freezing weather because they were almost out of fuel. I had to grab our truck and the fuel and meet them back near the start of the run. I picked up Jackie and put her bike on the trailer, filled Joe's tank, and then we, ran, we raced back to camp before dark and colder weather. Joe racing through the, road, the woods, me on the main road with Jackie in the truck trying to warm up. Good times, brother. We learned early on that our larger-than-life brother was invincible. He could do anything, perform any daredevil trick, and survive. Joe tried lots of stunts that would have killed any other kid on a banana seed bike. And the bike eventually turned into a mini bike, then a bigger motorcycle, and then a Camaro. Mom, Dad, you remember the one that Joe and I uh, stole one night while Joe was asleep? Took her a little joy ride? Some of the earliest memories of Joe being a car crazy are those of him on Holdman Road, racing cars with and against Kirby. Quarter mile runs in the dark to avoid being seen by the police. Fast forward. Joe would put together just about anything to race. From long mowers with Ron, yes, it was a thing, to quads side by side and sand rails with Woody, Harlan and Susie, and the coastal crew. There was nothing greater than seeing Joe race. Building cars and racing was in his blood. Joe loved holidays. They brought out the kid in him. We remember Mesa. There were siblings, nieces, nephews, and friends in tow. The moon was full and we were knee deep in Halloween fear. Screaming and running in terror and Joe was cool as a cucumber, watching us all scramble as chainsaws came out of nowhere. That deep chuckle that made his belly roll in full motion as Tammy ran over his back to try to get out first. Joe had no fear and a lot of fun in life. They say who, was, who constantly cheat death are living life to their fullest. Perhaps it's the lack of fear that opens up one's world allows a person to take risks that constrain the rest of us. Joe lived a full life despite his too soon death. He loved everyone with his fearless heart. Those of us who knew him, who loved him, who got angry with him, who worshiped him when he won races and showed us that lopsided grin, we'll miss that boy and that man he turned out to be. We'll miss the friend who was always quick with a sarcastic or funny line who was always ready to build that 
next car and eager to go off on another crazy racing adventure, who fought with us and loved us with equal equal. <coughs> Well, I guess he didn't like that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll miss the son, the brother, the husband, and the father who tested his limits, who brought home the trophies. Joe, for those of us who have watched and cheered for you to win every race that you ran, this is the one race that we wish you didn't finish first. <coughs> we'll mourn the man who's gone, who we lost way too early, but we'll remember him. And remember that above all, Joe would want us to remember him as he lived. On the edge of the ocean, a mountainside, in a garage, or on a racetrack, and on the fearless edge of what was possible. The most generous message of sympathy is a specific memory. At this time, the family would like to invite you to come and share with everyone here today a specific memory of Joe that brings a smile to your face and warms your heart. <coughs> And we mean that. Joe had an amazing family, an amazing extended family, and an amazing Department of Corrections family. And we would like to invite anyone that might have something special to say about Joe to please come forward. Unfortunately, I can't bring it to you. So you can come up here. Anybody?
name Joe's mother, and I look out at all of you, and I am so thankful that he has the friends and the loving people that he has, and I could not have raised any better son than he is. All of my children are wonderful, and he was special in my heart also. He will always be with me, and I hope with all of his friends. Anyone else like to come up and speak? You don't have to, it's hard. Joe and I started at the prison in 2001. Uh, I'm looking around at a whole bunch of people I know would love to be able to come up and say something. Uh, Jason Dubček, I can, I saw those guys as friendship and just, guys, we all know what that man meant to us. The whole St. Cruz in here. <laughs> and I would love to be able to thank him for all the things that he helped me build on paper for a 16 year old girl giving him a call and him driving to Hermston to help her fix a engine that her dad couldn't. <laughs> I had the pleasure of being in the mobile for the last rotation in Wakefield and being able to visit with him on a daily basis. And we talked about things that I don't talk about with everybody. We talked about God. <laughs> And one thing I know is he was so proud of his boy. I've never met him, but he was so proud of that young man and his ability mechanic. And he would laugh and just shake his head and say, boy, we butt heads sometimes, but it just shows me he's turning him into a man. And I'm just gonna miss that voice. everyone is comfortable where they are and nobody else wants to come speak, we would like to present then the Department of Corrections Honor Guard. Please rise for the presentation of the flag. Honor Guard and uniform personnel, present out.
order on. You may now be seated. And I have just one more request for a moment of your time. Uh, he 
never asked for anything, he never wanted anything. He was just kind of, he reminded me of a, a float in the ocean. He just kind of bobbing along as a kid. And it, it was very unusual to see some child like that, child less anyway. Finally hit on fishing. And I, I jump stories, so I, I will deviate just a little bit to tell you that I've heard words of kindness here of the thought and respect that he deserves as a mechanic. I'm here to say that I'm the one that steered him on the path. <laughs> uh, you know, if you're going to be a mechanic, be a good one. I know because I hired one of the best, and that was his dad. Uh, Joseph just went along with that and finally hit one day on something to do. Joseph, he knew that my wife and I liked fishing. We just fished on the banks, whether it was the Snake River, the Yakima with catfish, did not matter. And uh, boy, he took a shine to that a little bit in his outgoing way, which wasn't he just sit there quiet. You wanna go fishing? Yeah. Well, we had an old, and I mean, it was a beat up tiger, an old Jeep pickup, big one time. And we got Joseph Merrill, got him a fishing pole. The wife and I <laughs> quit over the middle and I thought he needs to know something in life that we're getting through. What better thing do you to do than be in a mechanic? So out came the slip joint pliers. <coughs> Got out before duty. I don't know, it doesn't matter. Going into Richmond, they used to call it the Rose Bowl, where they put going into town, they decided that's where they wanted to put their sewer septic system for the whole town. Well, they had occasional leaks there. Wasn't many, but a few on occasion. And I had read or heard on the radio that it was really bad. They had a bad leak. I quickly got a hold of Ken and or Sheriff and said, we need to borrow your son. Joseph Merrill was coming with us fishing. We got out to the first water crossing where they had a sewage leak. And I had already showed Joe how to operate the slip joint pliers. I said, I can't do this and Jimmy the clutch a little bit. And he says, so what do you want me to do? We'll just turn them like this and you keep going till it locks in. Come around the other side. He was great at it. He did a good job. We went fishing. We all caught a few fish out there. And in the back of my mind, I'm smiling. Because this boy, this young, young boy had to go out and after I went through the sewage, you take unlock them now, if you would, Joe. <laughs> and he didn't mind at all. He bounded out of there. He took a step backwards and fell off his butt. That was the beginning of him being a mechanic. And I'm telling you, I take pride in that. <laughs> uh, this may be a stupid story, but that's a fond memory of that young man. Thank you much. Oh, he did smile and say thank you when we got through. <laughs> <laughs> The family would now like to enjoy everyone and um, join. Ask everyone to join us in a celebration of Joe's life. We have cake, we have food. We want to see smiles and hear the stories all over the place. So please, now join us to relax and celebrate Joe.
I, I could see. I could see how hard it was. Very nice job.